So I was flirting with uh, one of the minister's daughter without knowing it. They were there for holiday. Cha cha cha. <laughs> Later, I know dogs are chasing. First thing, what you do, you run. You yeah. cycle hard, faster, right? So that's what happened. So if your bike is making noise, put an OSB W. Perfect. <laughs>
yeah. so balancing is, is this way uh, it takes a while to balance you use different set of muscles you uh, balance using your arm because your, your handlebar um, is linked to your front wheel so how you handle how you turn is very different uh, that's one way and the second is the underarm steering. So, so there are two uh, steering. Yeah, there's there's two types. There's there's oh, the, two types. the overarm and then there's the underarm. How you actually pull it, right? Mm. Um, I think you can just put some of the photos here. Yeah. There. Um, how you ride them is very different. Um, and the cornering, the speed, because they're so low, the stability that they had going downhill. Uh, I have some of my mentors and things like that. Um, when we were at uh, Wuling, uh, no, yeah, was it? Yeah, Wuling. We we rode up to the highest motorable road in Southeast Asia. It's about 3,275 meters. Um, going downhill at a gradient of I think 17, 18% at 70 kilometers an hour. I don't think anybody have the guts to do it. And he is already a 60 year old man <laughs> and he can still go that fast, you know, because the recumbent um, is like a bike, you know, when you lean and things like that, it's very stable um, due to the weight and also the geometry of the bike. Uh. How did you get to know about the recumbent? And is this your first bike that got you into cycling? Uh, no, uh, like I said, Kids, mountain bike, road bikes, uh, recumbent came because fascinated, you know, like, wow, what is that? So you, then, then I decided like, hey, you know, let's give it a try. And I fell in love with it, had it for a couple of years. Um, so cycle throwing, like, when you're done with work, hit your target, your sales target, whatever, um, off to cycling for one, two months. So the longest I did, uh, you know, um, like, for example, here, one of the rides was like Malaysia all the way to Vietnam. It's like, two and a half months of cycling, pure cycling. <laughs> Every day you wake up new places, you continue cycling. Um, then of course you have India, I've cycled east to the west, north to the south, one round. And, On the and recumbent? Then, yeah. It's insane, man. Uh, it's a conversation starter, yeah. right? It's a lot, uh, I like to talk. Yeah. Uh, in comparison with a road bike, people see, oh, it's, 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 it's a road bike. Road bike, I think it's all about how fast you can go, how expensive the bike is, weight, and probably looks, that's yeah. it, right? Uh, which a lot, of the, I think the hottest topic right now is uh, the Bianchi, the, 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 the new Bianchi Ultra, uh, which, oh, cannot. Yeah, I, I, I know, I right? cannot, I cannot, I cannot. I know, yeah, me but, too. But generally, that's how it is. Like. <laughs> okay, so when you did the, sorry, I'm still I'm still uh, stuck on that, that whole topic about the recumbent and yeah, the traveling because sure. it's so interesting. So when you travel on the recumbent, was it a solo ride? You have uh, a lot of them were solo. Um, sometimes you ride with a buddy, but it's unlike, you know, now it's your fiancé, right? Mm. Uh, like my wife as well. Um, even if you are with your fiancé or the cameraman, imagine both of you are stuck 24 hours together, day in, day out for the next one, two months. You <laughs> sleep, you shit, whatever, all together. So can you imagine? Uh, I mean, maybe the first two days, yeah, you know, you still get the adrenaline. But after that, you start to learn about each other. You start seeing things that will piss you off or you get very annoyed. Um, and then, of course, uh, there are a lot of things that comes into play. How do you write together, work together? You know, um, how do you talk? Sometimes, you know, um, with people I write with um, on long distance touring, for three days, we don't, just don't talk to each other. Like the only thing we talk like, come here, yeah. <laughs> Wanna cook? Okay, okay. Good night, good morning. Stop here, yeah, that's it. Because there's, there's, you run out of topics to talk. But then, of course, then eventually you have certain topics again and things like that. Yeah. Uh, it's what we call a lifestyle. Uh, so cycle touring is, a lot of people have done it. Um, I've met people that have cycled around the world many, many times. Uh, I've met a Korean lady. Um, I think somewhere at the time we were, I was in uh, Mongolia, I think. We were cross-passing, then we camped together. Uh, she's a very beautiful lady. <laughs> and you, you know, you can just put her link here somewhere. Um, <laughs> she rode solo around the world three times already. What? And stopped in every single country. Uh, took her a couple of years. So I think after 21 or 22, she decided, you know, hey, I want to try doing that around the world. So it's a lifestyle. Uh. It's a very nomadic lifestyle. Are you going to do it? Uh, my ultimate dream is to cycle North Pole to South Pole. <laughs> uh, but I don't think my wife will let me. Bring her along. Uh, no, she doesn't cycle. So uh. probably, you know, I'll do batches. In batches. You know, like over, maybe eventually, because you start from North Pole to the South Pole. So yeah. North Pole, you start with uh, at Ankara uh, in the US, the, the furthest land. Uh, habitable land and all the way down to the southern tip of Argentina. Mm, mm. So it's a very, very long, tough ride. Right. Which is the, what is the most memorable moment of, for you when you did this whole touring thing? Uh, there, there is a lot. There is a lot, to be honest. Um, well, one of them I really liked uh, when I was in India. So in India, uh, I, went, I, I was cycling, you know, then you reach certain part like that is very rural, right? So you were looking for a place and I decided, hey, I did not want to camp anymore. Uh, I was looking at, and it's a very small town. Uh, and 
and bear in mind, I have not started using smartphone until I think probably six, seven years ago. <laughs> I was still using, I, I, I dated my wife with SMSs, <laughs> right? You know, I was how, that's how not so tech savvy I am. <laughs> so anyway, long story short, uh, without a smartphone, traditional map. So we were looking, I was looking at this place. So there's this hostel like, okay, I, it looks like a hostel. So I went and asked, can I sleep here? Yada, yada. Then they said, hey, yeah, why not, right? So negotiated a price and stayed. And then uh, so happened, there was a very beautiful Indian lady uh, that came. And then she's like, oh, hi, because come on, India and our skin color, you know, <laughs> it's, it's a very big difference. So she started speaking English and then that got me intrigued. I've not spoken English at that time for almost two, three weeks, I think. I was like, wow, you know, you're going to go talk to her. So, so, so you got very uh, attached, like, you know, you find a reason to talk to her and she was very accommodating and talked and then you, know, you started flirting. Uh, at that time, I haven't met my wife yet. So, and when you started doing that, oh yes, you know, you started flirting and she was very beautiful. Then the next thing, her father came back, oh, introduced, speak, spoke very good English, like, oh, in the middle of nowhere, like some rural village. Then you realised, after talking to him, he was actually the secretary, uh, that, that means political secretary, you know, I think, uh, I don't know what you call that in Singapore and Malaysian terms, right? Uh, but basically, he is quite high, pangkat lah, quite yeah. high status uh, in the existing government. And that is him and that is his daughter I'm flirting with. So I was flirting with uh, one of the minister's daughter without knowing it. They were there <laughs> for holiday uh, back at their hometown. So that was very awkward. So uh, yeah, that eventually became a very long-term friendship that we had. Uh, Are you guys still friends? Yeah, yeah, we're still friends. Uh, I went to a wedding, I think, a couple of years ago. Oh. Uh, so yeah, pretty much that's, that's the story. That is so cool. So you meet a lot of very interesting people when you do a lot of cycle touring. You meet nice, nasty people. Yeah. Uh, I've been chased by, I think, slightly over 20 dogs, last I calculated. And I was still using a GoPro Hero 2 or Hero 3. That's how old, yeah. how long it was, <laughs> right? And it actually captured, uh, I think I'll send you the video um, mm. of like, 20 dogs chasing after me as you're cycling. And you managed to capture it on video? Yeah, because oh, the, the camera oh, was the, at the back on the of GoPro. my bike. Okay. Right, so uh, because I wanted to capture scenery and later I know dogs were chasing, first thing what you do, you run. You yeah. cycle faster, right? So that's what happened. Did anyone try to rob you or mob you uh, or anything like that? I believe that, you know, there were a lot of intentions, uh, but I think even if you go for holiday, you cycle alone and things like that, right? Uh, there will always have pe people with bad intentions, but you just need to be very vigilant. You need to safeguard yourself. Uh, the art of bullshit comes in place a lot. Like how much is this bike? Oh, yeah, I yeah. think you can't say it's too cheap. You can't say a few hundred dollars. Nobody's going to believe you, yeah, right? Yeah. Maybe with the NV, it's possible because there's no branding. <laughs> um, but uh, I think, you know, you just need to be smart on how do you avoid their questions. I just want to say a very interesting character to the point that my cameraman is actually listening. Most of the time, he's just sitting there doing his own thing. Yeah. I, think, um, I think he's just mesmerized with the bike. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Wow. Okay. We've uh, talked about, about a lot of uh, recumbent. Maybe you still have the recumbent, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've yeah. got to bring it on next time. Yeah. Okay. Borrow it in the next round um, and then we can actually see how that goes. Yeah. Out, yeah. So, uh, after recumbent, uh, what happened and then how did you get into road biking? Uh, then that eventually came to road biking. Uh, I can't remember, somewhere along the line just came in and um, Singapore, you know, uh, I moved back to Singapore for work uh, a couple of years ago, I think in 2019. So um, then after that, there was off and on, then I moved out again, I came back um, because previously I, was, I, I worked for uh, Facebook here in Singapore. Uh, so it was a lot in and out Singapore, uh, I travel a lot to different countries for work, uh, I relocated many times. Um, but then eventually it came down to Singapore, it's Pancake Island. Uh, there's no hills. So what can you do? You ride fast. So <laughs> you can't ride mountain bike here. I mean, I'm not saying you can't. It's just that it, to me, it doesn't make sense. Lah, right? Um, road bike it is. Yeah. And recumbent can't fit Singapore lift. I mean, by the time you lift the thing up, it's going to hit the ceiling. <laughs> right? Yeah. So what was the first road bike? Uh, the first road bike, uh, there was a Cervelo P1 or S1 something. Okay. I cannot, it's, a, it's a very old one. Uh, that was back in 2005 or 2007. Okay. Somewhere around there. And what subsequent bikes do you have after that? Oh, it, it comes and goes, it comes and goes. There's, 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 there's too many. I was into folding at one point of time, Bromptons, you know, they, they, it shifted so many times. At one point of time, I had like, I think slightly over eight bikes, nine bikes. Yeah. Uh, and then it shifted, moved down, up, you know, time goes. I mean, 
uh, like anybody, you know, you have your different desires over mm. over the years. But so far, road bike is where it is. Lah, Would you say you have tried most of the major brands and models out there? Uh, yes, I would say most of them, uh, except for some of the newer ones or the more niche brands. Uh, like if you want to say like uh, Jarokati or, uh, you know, a lot of Italian brands I cannot pronounce. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And what are the existing bikes that you have at home right now? You, this think, is not the only one. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's quite a number of them. There's uh, uh, English Cycle, which is a steel gravel bike. Then there's uh, Basso Diamante SV. And then there's this one. And I think there's also a uh, Passoni that's coming in. But I think, you know, in terms of this, uh, a lot of the bikes all came from Sam, um, Spin Axis. So he was gracious enough, you know, to put his skill into a lot of this. Not, just, not really him, more of Robert's uh, mm. skill. So yeah, that's pretty much. And how old is this bike? Uh, I think this bike was uh, two months, uh, but it has clocked slightly more than 2,000 km really. I, I only recently knew that Envy had frames. <laughs> oh yeah, I, I mean, not many people know. Um, uh, their, their first road frame is an all-road custom. It's a pure custom frame um, with uh, ISP seat posts and things like that. Uh, you can custom the geometry. They have standard stock geometry. You can custom it, but it's only available in the US. Do they, they still have it now? Uh, they still have it. Uh, a lot of pros ride it. Um, not on the uh, Tour de France level, uh, but a lot of continental pro teams. Mm. Um, but that is only available to the US market. So that's where the Mini comes into the picture for mm. the mass market. This is very new, right? This model? Yes, yes, it, it came out this year, if I'm not mistaken. And then uh, the difference is the all road is made in the US. Uh, this is actually made in Taiwan. Okay, and why this bike and how did you get to know about this? Uh, okay, I was looking around and then one of our friends said, you know, I said, hey, Mili looks nice, it's niche, maybe it's cool. And then he said, no, Tony, don't buy, you know, it's crap. <laughs> I, I think you know who you are. <laughs> uh, he's, he's definitely watching this video. Um, you know, say, don't buy, it's not, not worth it. And, Two days after that, he went and placed his order. He and was, I, so you're not the only one in Singapore with this bike? Yeah, yeah, there's quite a number of them, okay. uh, a handful. There's one with uh, a Campanolo Ica. Um, and uh, what do you call that? Then there's another one, one to one, same as you can see. Uh, we run through the specs later. Yeah. Um, but the difference is this particular frame cannot run Campy group set. Uh, because of the wirings of a uh, Campy, it's very thick. For, so the front derailleur, the, the cable hole, can't fit. So you have to drill a enlarge the hole. If you enlarge the hole, you're going to avoid warranty. So I think probably, you know, some people use a car or uh, a one buy, you know, in order to use this frame mm. uh, or just make the hole bigger. But you want your warranty with that. Mm. Um, but it's me really meant for a SRAM and a Shimano build. Um, I thought of going, you know, maybe SRAM because it's American, it's all American bike. Then I hate SRAM because you never know when the battery is going to run out. Yeah. Right, I know I've seen cases where you ride and the, 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 the retainer of the battery uh, at the back snapped mm. and then the whole battery flew up. So <laughs> Shimano is, is Shimano. bomb proof. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And where did you get this from? Uh, this is actually from Spin Axis. Um, but the funny part is Spin Axis is not the distributor. The distributor is still Elite Custom, right? Um, then, of course, they, are, they still have a lot of dealers and one of the dealers is Spin Axis. So you can actually go to Spin Axis and build up the whole bike. Do you have to wait long for the bike or it's more like a ready stock kind of thing? Um, it really depends on the sizing. It depends on what Elite has because I think a lot of their customers, as I know, quote, don't quote me on this, um, are international customers. Not a lot of them in Singapore. So Singapore, we all know that a lot of them are very brand stock, if, if that's the term. Mm. Uh, they like to go for the mystery. The most common you see is SL7, Dogma. And I think the upcom upcoming brand right now is uh, Super 6, Evo, uh, Cannondale. And then uh, Cervelos as well. Uh, but yeah, I think mainly I, I have never seen them because yeah. I, I ride Rafa a lot. In Rafa, I've only, with mine, there's only three. Do, do people know what bike this is? Do they stop and ask No, that's the best part I like about it. It looks like some cheap ass bike. But, <laughs> but the difference is once it stopped, you parked it and you, you, you take a double take at it. Like, hey, it looks nice, but you can't tell what it is. Yeah. So you, you can't really see the, any branding on it. Yeah. Okay, minus the Rafa, but you can't really see any branding on it which is nice. It's yeah. clean, it's nice, it performs well. You don't need our good friends at Track that spells like Track, <laughs> right? But I'm the kind of guy, I love, if I'm gonna spend so much money, I want people to know what bike this is, man. Uh, I mean, yeah, you can do that. But That's I, my personality. Yeah, I like it clean, but yeah. when you have clean, uh, when your bike is clean and is very minimalistic, whatever you do to the bike, it stands out. Like you have the very nice orange hub there mm. or a little bit of decals and that they, they pop a little bit more. So the decals are stock with the frame? 
Um, no. So uh, the, the original decal, if you can see, uh, is actually black. Uh, is a polished black. So uh, through Slick Graphics, which is a decal provider uh, for Envy, uh, you can actually order custom decals to, to replace the, the decal. So some of the original Envy blacks, the, the polished black decal, um, mm. you just stick over it and cover it, mm. uh, things like that. So uh, as you might know, the Envy wheel sets, right? It's, it's almost raw carbon. Uh, the decals are actually, the, the, the emblems and everything is actually sticker, mm. which you can replace them. Uh, there are some of them that have done it, a uh, buddy of mine did it in camo style. I didn't really like it. Uh, this, it's just my personal preference. I like it clean, simple. Mm. Uh, and it, you know, you don't get bored of it after a while. Yeah. I know when you sent me, I asked you for the pictures and the details of your bike, which you guys can find in the video's description. Uh, when I look at the picture, I was like, this bike looks so ordinary. It looks like some China bike that yeah, you can get it, online. It Until you brought it out just now and I probably can't capture it on camera later, but on B-rolls, the front is chunky. I love the front, man. Yeah. Uh, I mean, and it slopes down. I would like it more if the top tube isn't sloping so much. Okay, it's just the because it slopes so much the geometry of the bike, it handles differently. A lot of people think geometry is the same. When you buy a bike, what's my top tube length and things like that, and you roughly guess what's your size, you know, your stem. But you have to bear in mind with all these changes, there's a reason to it, right? Yeah, drop seat stays and everything. Um, the shortest uh, chain stay. Um, it alters the handling of the bike. You know, what is the ratio or the degree of the fork? Uh, yeah, so like I was just telling you, you know, uh, earlier, um, when I was in Korea, we were going down high speed, like I, I think I was clocking out 54, 55, the high 50s, right? Um, and we were going downhill, you know, in, in Korea, it's, it's, we are not talking about, um, if you've ridden like Vigilante or you've ridden like the steep side of Faber, but imagine coming down that kind of steepness, but at like 10 kilometers of that kind of steepness cornering, give it a try with one heavy uh, crosswind, your handlebar will shake and eventually it become like cha-cha-cha, cha-cha-cha, <laughs> right? Yeah. So it's very crazy. It's very twitchy bike. Um, it's very, very, very responsive. Um, you want to say stiff? Not, it's not really stiff. Um, it's not harsh, but it's, it's very... Uh, I want, you can't say it harsh as well. It's like borderline between harsh. It's not as harsh, but it's buttery smooth. Mm. It's buttery smooth. That, that's one thing I like about it. Um, yeah. What so, makes the Envy, Envy, how do I pronounce it? Melee? Mili? Uh, I call it Mili. Some people call it Melee. Okay. Uh, Americans call it Malay. <laughs> I, I call it Mili. You know, Malaysian yeah. style. What, what, what makes this frame stand out from, you know, other frames? What's okay. so great about it? Uh, okay. I think every frame has its uniqueness, handmade, yada, yada. Um, it comes down to personal preference. Nobody, uh, reviewers can only say so much. That is their writing style. You have different writing style. Uh, personally for me, which will obviously contradict a lot of riders, how I write them, is that number one, warranty, baby. Why? Uh, as you all know, if your don't, readers don't know, is that uh, Envy has a very well-known crash replacement program. Uh, you crash the wheels, replace. You just need to probably pay a shipping fee. But one-to-one -one brand new wheels, right? Same for the frame, but the frame, I think, is uh, a 50% or 45% off of a new frame. Um, and you can get it off anytime you want, right? Uh, and, and that's what you need about it. Uh, that extends down to the seat post, stem, handlebar, and everything else. So it's a bike that you don't have to baby it like a lot of bikes. You crash your Dogma F, is kiss your bike goodbye. Okay. Unless you buy insurance, which means spending more money. Which means that you, ca I mean, if you want to ride hard, I trash this, like really trash it, right? And uh, we'll come to it. A bit later, I'll tell you a different thing, but yeah. uh, you really trash this bike. So I don't baby this bike, you know, you don't treat it well. I really trash it. But of course, you do the due diligence on the maintenance. Uh, so it's a one-to-one -to -one replacement, no questions asked? No questions asked. So brands like Specialized, Pinarello, they don't have such uh, programs? Uh, as, far, as far as I know, generally no. If you crash them, is probably you may get a certain percentage of discount. discount right. But I think that's about it. Uh, then is or if not, it's, it's for a lot of people that want to cut costs, power import, great. Yeah. Crash is bye-bye. But this is something that my dad would say, you pay so, that's the reason why you're paying so much for it because Correct. of the, the crash. But how often are you going to crash the bike, right? The different, okay, it's not about crashing the bike, it's the peace of mind. Same thing like you have a rear cycling camera. It's expensive. Why do you need something so chunky, right? Is that one time it crashes or it ha anything happens, it pays off for mm. itself. It's like you buying insurance. You don't know what has happened, but you just get it first. <laughs> It is the same thing, right? So, so how much is the frame? Uh, I think the frame retails for eight, 
1,200 plus plus, if I'm not mistaken. Uh. Okay. Uh, what do you think of it? I mean, obviously, it's yours already. Uh, well, for that price, for what it, it does, I, I love it a lot. Um, it's clean. I mean, at the end of the day, uh, there's no turning back already, lah. <laughs> right? There's no turning back. So just say good things about it, lah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, pretty much it's good. I, I don't say anything bad about it, but uh, I never did know how to appreciate dogmas. They're too curvy. I don't like too curvy, too straight. Not my liking, but uh, yeah. I used to be like you. I hated the way the dogmas look so curvy, but. I kind of grew to like it. The more I look at it, it's like, oh, I'm very unique. Yeah. I want to get one. <laughs> but personal preference. Uh, I mean, personal preference. Uh, uh, but the Envy stands out a bit more because it's almost blank canvas. And is this the only color that it comes with? Yes, only one. Okay, what, what's the color called? Uh, Damascus. Damascus. So it's called Damascus Grey. So it's like, under the sunlight, there's a heat, hint, uh, a tinge of like a bit champagne with a little rainbow to it. Uh, you can't really see with light. You have to see it under like proper sunlight. Mm. And a lot of time, Pictures cannot do it justice. You really have to see it for yourself uh, to appreciate the beauty of it. Lah. And this is size 52. You stand at 174 centimeters, 79 centimeters in Insane. Yep. Uh, how did you pick out this bike size? Uh, this was pretty much a uh, bike fit. Um, not so much bike fit, it's more a sizing fit just to get the right geometry. Because if you don't get the geometry right, that means you have to buy more spare parts, right? <laughs> I mean, I, I know that you like to trial, but <laughs> an Envy stamp is not cheap, my friend. Yes. <laughs> right? So, but the thing is, when you buy this frame, um, you have uh, zero setback seat post or with setback. Um, you can customize your uh, handlebars with, you can customize your stamp. But once you order it, that's it. Mm. Anything you want to change after that is either you back Elite mm. to change it free, or if not, you just buy a new one. Mm. So you did a bike fit, that's how you knew this was a size? Uh, it's more of a sizing fit. Sizing fit is just to measure, you know, what's the size and everything. Then after that, uh, as you fine tune, uh, because I was in Korea, so um, I was training with uh, an ex-professional uh, uh, cyclist, and she's also a certified UCI coach. Um, a little bit fine tuned here and there. And besides, if you go for bike fit, if you have the bike already, and you're pretty much comfortable, what they will do? Cleat adjustment and seat post height and you know, Saddle, and then you pay another thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anywhere from five hundred to a thousand dollars, so. So which is, for someone who wants to buy a new bike, go for a what do you call bike size? A sizing fit, sizing just fit. to see what kind of bike. Because you have endurance geometry, you have racing geometry, you have aero geometry. So you have to understand, you know, what type of bike you want to buy. Then, uh, I'm sure that you know. Then uh, when you go for sizing fit, they will be able to adjust the, that particular. Uh, specialized model for you to, to, to suit the geometry, um, then you see if that's what you want. If not, then that may not be what you want. And sizing fits are not very expensive, right? Very inexpensive. Uh, sizing fit, I think it's quite cheap. It's, uh, I think the one with Sam was about uh, 200 or 300, somewhere around okay. there. Okay. So sizing fit is just to check, you know, this bike suits you or not, um, what is suitable for you. So it's very different from bike fitting. Uh, I, don't, I don't believe bike fitting, to be really honest, um, because when you ride, Bike fit is to ensure that you ride comfortably uh, on that speci uh, specific geometry. But your riding style may differ. So that means your adjustments or your cleat, how you pedal, adjustments of your seat post and everything will, will change, right? So a bike fit at the end of the day is just wasted money. So you, I, I believe you should just go for a sizing fit. Uh, and then as you ride, uh, you Either you fine tune yourself or you have someone that is experienced to help you with it yeah. or you have a coach you know, yeah. to really train you up yeah. based on your riding style. Yeah. Uh, I don't want to go further into that because I might get roasted by people who yeah. do bike fits. <laughs> like, yeah, this yeah, guy yeah, yeah, I know. I always know. talking about bike fits, so I, I don't want to go there. Yeah. Uh, okay, that, that aside, uh, let's go on to the bike. We've uh, spoken for half an hour. Uh, if the honors to you run us through your whole entire bike. So, as you can see, everything is from Envy. Uh, we accept for exception of group set and maybe the accessories. So you have uh, NV um, Aero handlebar. It's at 400 mm, 100 mm stem NV Aero stem. That's the new iteration. Um, Together, the bus is a new one, right? Yeah, yeah, correct. So uh, this is a Sele Italia um, seat, uh, saddle, saddle uh, in collaboration with NV. So there's an NV printed. On the set, on the saddle. So that's the only difference with the NV logo on there. Yeah. So they they do actually. I mean, it, it, 
it's NV bike. Come on, you must have NV <laughs> somewhere. So um, I wanted the carbon rail, but they didn't have stock, so I, I settled with titanium rails. Um, then after that, uh, NV the new SES uh, 2022 1 4.5. Um, then after that, with Chris King Ceramic Hub, uh, Ceramic Speed uh, BB, Dura Ace, Chow Speed. Uh, I usually in Singapore run 52.36 at the back, 11.30, but I just came here from Climb. So right now it's 50.34, 11.34 at the back. Um, MV Border Cages, uh, what else is MV? Uh, even the Valve Cap as well is MV. Bar tape? Uh, bar tape is Envy. The only thing is missing right now, which a friend of mine ordered the Envy lock ring, which he didn't get for me as well. I forgot about it. Uh, there's an Envy lock ring. I think that's missing. Um, and my tires are Continental GP5000 STR. Where's uh, the Envy tires, man? Uh, coming soon. Coming soon. Uh, I totally forgot about it. And then uh, uh, the new Varia uh, S ST is it or? RT uh, something. Why is it so much RC. bigger than the old one? Uh, because it comes with a rear camera with it. Oh, okay. um, then I got a 3D printer mount so that it's cleaner. It doesn't stick here mm. on the, the seat post. Uh, I use a Wahoo Roam for bigger screen. Um, then after that, uh, exposure lights. And uh, SLF OSPW. Mm. Okay, this, that is a good reason for that. Yeah, you told me there's yes. a reason. So, there's a very good reason. So, um, the last time I was riding in Korea with this as well, uh, a couple of trips, uh, the, 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 the earlier, a month ago trip, right? Um, road is fine, but I think when I packed uh, in a bike bag, right, um, it didn't put properly. So, I think the rear derailleur or something got damaged with it, right? So, I brought it back to Sam. I said, Sam, hey, problem lay. So, they try, try, tune, 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 tune. There is this very loud clicking sound. To the point, you know what they did? They changed the derailleur cage. Still didn't work. They changed the document, didn't work. Came to the last point, they changed the entire derailleur. The clicking sound is still, still there. It's like very loud clicking and grinding sound. So then thought, oh, maybe it's my hub. Took another, took out the whole wheel. So happened there was another um, Chris King uh, NV wheels as well. Put in, roll. Still clicking, cannot find. So. You know what? Uh, the mechanic, Robert uh, from CMX, said, you know, let's try something funny. Put an OSBW. So he took out from the basso, from my basso, right? And then put it here. Whoa, no sound. So it was the RD. Uh, nobody knows. Okay. So this was the same RD, um, uh, the original so RD. So it's the pulley wheel that's... Uh, we, tried, we changed the pulley wheel, we changed the cage. To the point, we changed the entire derailleur brand new. Brand new out from the box and just need to try whether it works. The sound is still there. Right. We couldn't figure out why, but when you put the OSPW, there's no sound. So if your bike is making noise, put an OSPW. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> this is what I went through. True story. I'm not. I kid you not. It's true story. You can ask, actually go to Spin Nexus and ask Sam about it. So is Sam uh, selling SLF now? Uh, no, 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 You'll be no, a no. testimonial for selling with uh, No, no. Um, I, I, I got this uh, way back for the bus, so, but uh, it's, it's, a good, it's a good time. You know, you can have an OSBW. I like it because it's a bit more muscular, angular that suits the bike. Yeah. Uh, I hate ceramic speed uh, OSBW. It, it looks here, there, no there. Mm. So yeah, it's pretty much envy everything. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I just want to ask this question. When... How, how does this bike compare to the Diamante and which bike do you pick to go out um, Okay, so there were a lot of choices. Um, then it just settled down. It's NV, the warranties, right? And on top of that, it looks clean and you don't see bikes like this, like high-end frame bikes like this anymore. Mm. And that sort of caught my eye. I said, hey, let's give it a try. It's new. And so far, nobody had anything bad to say about it. There's always somebody who will say something bad about SL7, Dogma F. There's always something bad to say about it. This is not super good. Like a lot of people say like, wow, like how S SLF things, but there is still certain things, uh, how, how I would say, uh, that can be improved. But in general, it's a bike that you cannot complain. Hmm. But it's very twitchy. So it's like, you know, a very beautiful girlfriend, but with a hot temper, you've got to take care of her well, you know, that kind of thing. <laughs> okay. Um, and questions on wheel set. You said these are the new 2022 ones. Yes. What, what's the difference between 2022 uh, ones? It's NV claim, uh, stiffer carbon, new layout, and things like that. But it is way lighter than the old SES. Is it hookless? 
he's hookless, unfortunately. So the new ones are all hookless? Yes, unfortunately. So you can't go high PSI. The rear, I'm going 60. The front is 56. Tubeless? Yes. Uh, tube, tubeless is the way to go. Um, you cannot run tube. I mean, emergency, you can. But when you go tubeless, bro, it's battery smooth. This bike is so quiet. Um, with Unless you freewheel at very high speed, then probably hear a little bit of buzzing, the, the angry bee sound mm. due to the creasing. If not, it's silent. Um, we have uh, I have Chris King's on my NVs, but mine's the older one. It's a five six, yeah. And I think I overpaid for it because I don't think I need NV wheels and a Chris King hub. Uh, no, it's just uh, how I say. A for me, it was uh, yeah. For me, it's, I just wanted to try. Like, what's the hype? Why would people pay so much for this? So I wanted to try, but uh, people watching that, I don't think they should spend so much money on wheels. Okay, the hub it it depends person to person, right? Um, I don't like a lot of noise. A lot of people like noisy hubs. DT Swiss is mm. a good example. I don't like it. Uh, it annoys the hell out of me. Uh, even white industries as well. So, Chris King is silent, but the new uh, Shimano Dora A's or Artigra C50s, they are super silent. Um, but, there is still a bit of noise, and the noise still does not sound as nice as a Chris King. Mm. And besides, Chris King, come on, you can't say no to a coloured hub. <laughs> Without any logo, like, yeah. It looks nice. Yeah. And what's your opinion on hookless? Ah, uh, okay. Pray very hard. Durian Rider might be watching. Yeah, just pray very hard <laughs> that you don't have a puncture. Because if you have puncture, tubeless, if you cannot seal, um, you can have a plug, great. But if you need to change a tube, pray very hard and say, God save me. Don't make sure it doesn't slip off. <laughs> no, if you're going to put in the tube, you have to take it out. You have to open one side. What do you mean? Hookless. If you have to put a tube inside. Ah. So when you pump it in, you got to either have a CO2 and try to burst the thing open at one go and pray very hard. Right. But if if your um, CO2 canister is one that you cannot control the pressure, you may blow up and the tire may just pop out as well. <laughs> so you're back to square one. So then you why are people going to hookless? Why are many uh, producers? I have hookless? no idea. You ask me a difference hookless or hook or uh, um, non hookless, I have absolutely no idea what's the difference. <laughs> All I know is I want an MV wheels, the new one is this, live with it. I'm lucky that mine is the old one that is uh, not hookless. But the difference is, uh, you should, you, you're a bit lucky because the older MV wheels are, is lifetime warranty and crash replacement. The newer ones are only five years. Why? Uh, good question. Time to email and <laughs> After five years, the thing will break. <laughs> Well, then again, or too if, many claims if it on... can last for five years without you needing a submit warranty, you, you have earned your money. Yeah, that's, that's true, that's true. Yeah, I mean, you pay for good quality product to last you a while. Mm. Uh, I've got questions. Yes. Dura is 12 speed, but I noticed the rotors are different. Yes, those are the new rotors, uh, Dura is rotors. Um, I cannot remember, MT900 something something. Um, but the older rotors are, what I would say, the design of the fin, the cooling is less efficient. All these are claims from Shimano. Um, the new ones are a bit better. The, the paint, the black paint on it dissipates heat faster. I can't tell the difference. I still brake as hard. Um, even better, most people can't tell the difference because they're just too fast, they don't brake. <laughs> so, it looks more, uh, more like the SRAM rotors now. Yeah, I mean, it's supposed to be better cooling, I yeah, think. That's yeah. what they said. But uh, lighter, yes, 2 grams, I think that's it. Mm. So you're gonna pay like uh, 130, 140 bucks yeah. for two grams. Yeah, but I think it's, <laughs> I think maybe you know. Okay, yeah. and, and these are new Wahoo. I think it's Wahoo Power Links. Yeah, the new Wahoo Power Link pedals. Mm. Uh, I didn't want crankbase. Uh, just in, when I want to change it. Mm. Uh, but yeah. Why not Favero? Uh, I was using a Favero, but the problem with Favero is you need to sometimes try to fiddle, find a way. Okay, so you wanted like the lollipop both sides. Lollipop, traffic light. Once yeah. you go there, you just slam on it and you pedal. Okay. Sam convinced it me. <laughs> uh, from and are you convinced? Yeah, I'm pretty much convinced. So pretty much uh, all the way already. Not going to go back to those Shimano no, 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 no. <laughs> and on top of that, it doesn't scratch my shoe so bad. Oh, yes. Yes. Right, so right. because if it's hooked, you miss it. <laughs> Yeah, your yeah. carbon, your beautiful carbon sole is goodbye. Yeah. So I have a few nice carbon shoes I want to maintain. <laughs> I mean, yeah, stone chips will happen, but yeah. you want to protect it if you can. Uh. Yeah. If there's one thing or two things that you could change about the frame, what would it be? Or the bike? If oh, yes. Uh, there's a few things, uh, definitely. Uh, one is I want an NV titanium bottle cage boat. That's what I want. That's for sure. <laughs> um, then, of course, the saddle, uh, carbon rail saddle. Uh, but 
other than that, there's really nothing else to change really. I mean, I'm so in love with the bike, uh, pretty much. So Diamante is ne neglected? Uh, it's a different kind of breed of bike. Uh, Diamante, when I took it to Chiang Mai, it can climb, but it's a bit heavy. But because it's heavy arrow, I'm sure you ride a bench, it's, it's not light. But one is, once it goes, it goes. But this is something that you have to, it goes as well, it's still a so-called arrow frame, but you have to pay attention. If you lose focus or you tend to fool around, it will rebel against you because it's a very twitchy bike. Mm. What is the weight and how much do you think this bike costs right now? Okay, I think retail. Nobody pays retail anyway, right? Uh, without all the accessories such as the lights, lights and uh, bike computer. Uh, but, and then the pedals, of course. Uh, it's roughly about 21, 20,000 give and take. All in. Is it more expensive than Diamante? Oh yes, 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 definitely. Okay. Yeah, but um, the weight with all the accessory in, I think, should be around eight. If I'm not mistaken, with eight. Uh, without the accessories, I, uh, I checked it before. It was uh, seven point five. Mm. Yeah, but uh, yeah, it's not exactly light. No, is it exactly heavy? Uh, I'm not a weight weenie. It's easier for me to lose hundred grams on myself than on the bike. <laughs> it's cheaper. It's free. Yeah, but we all love nice things in life. Uh... Yeah, but okay. Um, have you seen how my crank arm looks like uh, on the drive side? The amount of chips it has. Oh yeah. Uh, imagine a THM crank. <laughs> I mean, if you can, I, I can afford a THM crank. You're gonna put a what two thousand dollar euro crank, and you imagine that kind of chip. Yeah. You will yeah. ache a lot. <laughs> you will feel more. You, you will tend to cry more because of that. So yeah. why? Yeah. This bike's meant to be abused. Right. Uh, cameraman, any questions you want to ask? Should one poison himself to buy a melee frame? Why? Uh? Should one poison? Of course. The problem is you how to poison yourself when there's none on the road. <laughs> <laughs> so that's why you're here. <laughs> yeah, he came here just to see your bike, man. Yeah, like, I mean, I, need to I mean, that's the whole reason you wanted to see the bike. You, you don't see often. <laughs> I mean, as don't say as as often. Dogma, Cervelo, you, you're bound to see it. But it's either you go to Elite Custom Showroom or me or a few others on yeah. the road. Then yeah, you probably bump into them. Uh. Okay. Okay, so now we'll move on to the Instagram Q&A. You guys want to ask your questions, you can follow me on Instagram and you can submit it through my IG story. Uh, Tony, are you ready with a l quite a number of questions? I think maybe because it's a bike that you don't see often. Yeah, but yeah, go ahead. bike you don't see often, right? Your wife doesn't watch my kind of shows, right? Or will, they, will she watch my your interview? Uh, yes and no, but just ask, it's okay. Okay, the question is price breakdown. Oh, good question. I cannot remember. <laughs> I really cannot remember uh, the parts. And like I said, nobody pays retail. Okay. So, uh, so 20, 21K. Yeah, even if I want to say like that, then it's not going to be fair to the bike shop yeah, yeah, as yeah. well, right? Okay. So um, I think in terms of what you can get, I think that's up to your relationship with the bike shop. Mm, okay. we we'll leave it as there, you guys. Uh, Internet savvy can go and find out. Next question, why not the NV Custom Road and how much more expensive is that or this? I want. I cannot get. That's the problem. Because <laughs> it's in the US? Yes, it's only US based. They're not going to ship internationally. And on... why, why would you want that over this? Uh, because I can custom the paint more. So it's only paint? Yes. Geometry is the same? Uh, no, you can custom your geometry. That's the best part. And okay. ISP seat post. I hate ISP, ISP seat post. Why? Because if so happen, your bike box cannot fit it, yeah. you are screwed. Yeah. Right? But you can custom paint it. But as I know for uh, NV frame, if you custom fit it, oh, what is this scratch? Oh, don't care. But uh, if you custom paint this bike, if I'm not mistaken, it voids the warranty. I'm not mistaken, unless it's US based through certified painter. So if I'm what, not mistaken. What kind of things that you have uh, that will void the warranty? You, so besides paint? You paint, you drill the hole for a campy group's uh, wiring. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Like, you can't really do much, right? Yeah, unless you make massive modification to it, like that is not intended to be modified, then yeah, I think then you probably want your warranty if they find out. Okay, and you've got a pretty slam stem, just a bit more faces. Like. Uh, no, because I try not to go too slam. Uh, there is only like one small little spacer, uh, I think less than 5 mm, because it looks a bit weird. I, mean, I tried it, but it looks a bit teeny bit weird. Do you need to have the last spacer or can you go all the way down? Uh, no, you still need to have the last spacer okay. uh, because 
that's the design of if it. If not, you'll be touching this top camera. Yeah, right? so you still need to have something there, uh, the minimum spacer. Mm. Uh, I can just remove a 5mm, but I'm ready there. And now to take out, to cut, it's just a lot of headache. So forget <laughs> about it. It's on the heavier side, weighing about 75 kilograms. Is it more of an aero or a climbing bike? No. Uh, Envy calls it an aero. Uh, it depends. Different reviewers call it, some call it aero, some call it all rounder. Uh, it's definitely not a climbing bike. Uh, bear in mind, 7.5 with pedals. And a lot of people. This breaks as well. Yeah, without pedals. But at the end of the day, to be really honest, how light you want your bike to be? I mean, you can cut another, I can go 7 kilos. I mean, I'm very sure I can go 7 kilos, DHM here, cut here, cut there a little bit, but uh, is there a need? Hmm. I don't need it. And I want to keep like Envy all the way. So if Envy all the way, this is pretty much the white, the, the weight already. Right. SL7 versus your Melee. Oh yes, Melee. this. Have you seen the new SL7 color? The, the pink? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah, the yeah. one like confetti? <laughs> confetti, yeah. You know, I, saw, I first saw that in Korea, a friend of mine, you know what we said, you know, it's sort of like the icing, you know, the, the confetti <laughs> ice cream. Someone <laughs> ate that and pooped out that color. <laughs> I was condemning it. It really looks like that color. I mean, some people find it beautiful, but come on. Really? I actually thought it was a custom painted color, but it was actually a factory default yeah, color. Yeah, so it seriously looked like someone ate a lot of confetti and pooped up the color. I mean, that's how I looked but at it. But in terms of geometry, let's not talk about color. Uh, geometry, uh, yes and no. Uh, I never did like that curve hole there mm. um, to it. It's like half bitten apple, like <laughs> apple. Yeah. So, yeah, but ridden it, it's actually quite a nice bike. It's, it's a very nice bike, don't get me wrong. Uh, but it's not something that I'll go for it. Uh, mainly because it's, it's a very overhyped price bike. Right. Because um, if... A lot of people don't know how bike are priced is that if uh, a bike brand sponsors a pro team, your bike price will go up. Yeah, Definitely. That's true, that's true. Uh, they need to make up the difference back, right? But yeah. if not, then yeah, that's, that's, that's fine. Now. So you're convinced if some pro use it? It's already, there's quite a lot of pros, but um, I don't think Envy is at the level at this stage right now at the release to be able to supply to Tour de France pro team yet because how many frames they run through a season? Mm. A lot. Mm. And... I don't think that, you know, with their warranty, they crash a little bit, come warranty, warranty. It's going to make Bangui mm -hmm. go bankrupt, man. On this topic of UCI pro teams, right, I think uh, when I interviewed Duran Ryder, he did say that the pro teams are actually using a different kind of frame as compared to the consumer market. Slightly, slightly. Do you think that's true? Uh, yes, some of them, yes. Uh, not many of them do admit it. Uh, some of them do. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, it's not EF. I think uh, uh, Ineos, they did say that their, their carbon is slightly different. Uh, based on the specs of the rider. Yeah. Mm, so okay. Uh, this, uh, <laughs> on the OSPW, question is, why does every bike in Singapore have OSPW and the user doesn't look like she is from Singapore? Uh, no, I'm not from Singapore. Uh, I, I'm just based here, right? Uh, for work and all. Um, the OSPW is very simple. Like I just said, noise reduction. They are the OSPW. Because until today, I cannot find the damn noise. <laughs> so... OSPW it is. So if there's no noise, you will stick with the default? Uh, yeah, I'll code. definitely go back to the carbon cage. I mean, the Dura Ace carbon cage is... It's a carbon is, cage? Yeah, it's carbon cage. Dura Ace 12 speed, the cage is carbon. Oh. And it looks very sleek with the lights and everything. Mm. Uh, it's a little bit lighter. Uh, it's not black. Mm. It's light grey like that. So it looks very nice. Mm. But yeah. Okay. Okay, this is an interesting one. Is the setting up of hookless tyres different from regular tubeless? And how does the hookless ride feel you might have answered a bit of it just okay uh let me answer the later one the right feel is very nice because you run lower psi so it's very comfortable you don't have to pump high psi so some people are like the tire looks flat it's not and because it's low pressure when you ride it it's buttery smooth due to it being hookless uh setting up yes there is a problem is that you need to pump very high pressure all in one go so what i do is i have a air canister um, Shaw Bay set, uh, sells them and some of them. You put in, you pump air into it and you just open the valve, it bursts, have a sudden burst of air and just locks, seats all your tyre in place. Uh, and then of course, refilling a tubeless is just like normal. Yeah. So if you don't have that, that means you have a traditional hand pump. Good luck, my friend. <laughs> so there is a lot of tools out there to make your life convenient. So yeah. it depends on what you want. Okay, um, let me know if I can ask you this question or if you don't want to answer it. Uh, question is, what do you do for a living? Me, I deal with advertising. So, uh, advertising, I look after the region, I travel a lot. Um, and 
The difference is that I travel a lot, like recently in Korea for work and also for leisure and things like that. Uh, gives me opportunity to write a lot. Yeah. Uh, how to afford? I'm sure that some people will ask. I say, everybody has this different hobby, but if you want to flex a little bit, my money, I do what I want. No. Yeah, I think, you know, when I was a kid, uh, when I look at people who had road bikes, I was like, well, how am I ever going to afford a road bike? So expensive. So to the kids out there who are watching, What's the inspiration to them? Like, how, how do they get... Uh, you got to work really hard. You got to work really hard. It's all right to fail. I mean, I fail a lot of times. Uh, and priorities. You don't get sidetracked a lot of things, right? Uh, I'm sure that even you, um, but you, are, you should be... You could afford, but you decide to put your investment towards this channel, right? With the gears and everything, I, th I think they're not cheap, right? Uh, your time, commitment, and things like that. These are not cheap. So that is your priority. Um, I wear cheap clothes, bro. Uh, oh, like... I mean, yeah, I, I buy things during sale. Uh, Uniqlo is my best friend. I, <laughs> I don't have any luxury shoes, but the amount of cycling shoes, oh, that's a lot. <laughs> right? Same thing that, you know, priorities are very different. Um, but if you have your priorities right, yeah, why not? When it comes to cycling, right, I think we guys or ladies out there, we don't think twice. Yeah. You know, we see shoes, 500 bucks, buy, like instant buy. But when I go out buying normal casual shoes, I think oh, twice, yes. 100 bucks are a bit Oh, tell me, I, I was just there. Earlier today, I need to get a new pair of sneakers. I look at 90 bucks and I need a shoe. I mean, that is after sale, like, my gosh. And I dropped, and I paid like 675 bucks or $650 for the new S-Works torch. Uh, basically this, and I abuse it, like, like scratches it. I whack like, hmm, comfortable, it's worth it. Like, yeah. 600 bucks. Why, why did Wasn't you get the torch and not the higher end one? Torch is the highest. This is the new S Works uh, oh, okay, torch. Okay. I thought there's someone like a van or something like that. No, van is uh, is the older model. Ah, uh, this okay. is the latest one. Uh, came out like a couple of months ago only. Uh, I bought it when it first came out. Talk us through about your outfit. I I'm assuming this is not your normal outfit. No, use. it's not outfit because it's a little bit hot. Like I'm saying, I'm sweating a lot, <laughs> so I'm just wearing like a normal tee and then um, bibs and things like that. So is, is Rafa your go-to brand for outfits? Uh, for now, yes. Previously, I was very much into Map, and then they started having certain quality issues. Hmm. Uh, I like the new Rafa. Can you ask? Uh, can can I ask what kind of quality issues? Um, stitching and then they wear out very fast. Um, if you have a power mirror and this is me destroy after destroying six matte beeps, protein beeps, very high end beeps, is when you have a S Works power mirror. Why? Because of the abrasion, it wears out the chamois very, very, very fast. Is it because of the power mirror? Are you sure yes, it's the power it's mirror? Yes, it's the power mirror. I tried it on uh, the Physique. You know, Physique have this 3D printed thing, uh, saddle. I forgot what's the model, Argo something. Yeah. Uh, I had it on a basso. I never had an issue. When I tried a power mirror, like, wow, you know, everybody say power mirror. I tried a power mirror. Mm. It destroyed six beeps until I, by the time I realized it was too late. Mm. So, no, don't forget about it. Um, map beeps, um, they're, they're very comfortable, but their fabric is very thin. They, mm. They're not, resilient enough. Uh. Rafa mm. is a little bit more. So, Rafa it is. Okay. Uh, this is your, from your, I think, I believe he's your friend because when I posted the IG story. He yeah. was like, oh, this is my friend. I'm going to spam him. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, the question, he asked a few questions but I'm going to ask one. Uh, why, did you, why didn't you go for the Campy e-car? Uh, best China group set for this China bike. Oh, yeah. I know, I know. Uh, because he, he knows that there's another Campy e-car on another melee, right? Um, but, to me, uh, you are this part of the world, you're not in Italy, right? <laughs> it's either Shimano or Shram. Yeah. Shram, I don't like charging things a lot. I got a lot of devices to charge already. Yeah. I charge this once, don't have to worry already. Yeah. Like for the next couple of months. <laughs> and Shimano is bomb proof, man. Yeah. Yeah. So why not? I mean, it looks kind of nice. Uh, don't get me wrong, Campy group sets are very nice, whether e-car or super record and everything. But when you want a service, you send to any shop, they look at you twice. Sorry, bro. <laughs> Can't help. Right? Yeah. I mean, some people can, but then again, you have to baby the thing mm. to, to make it look nice. I don't want to baby it. Mm. Um, Five-year warranty on defects. Why pull the trigger on the Melee versus Tarmac versus Atos? Tarmac's words, Atos. Uh, one, like I said, uh, I didn't like the uh, Tarmac already as a seven. Um, and of course, the warranty. Then again, put it this way, you're, by, you're a rider. Trust me, the next new thing come in, you will change. One <laughs> or two years down the road. It's just a matter of time. Ethos, I don't mind, but for a classic looking bike like that, lightweight, there are way better other choices. And for that kind of design, I'd rather go titanium. Mm. Uh, High-end titanium like Passoni or Patalin and many others. Mm. But why should I go for... In Ethos. Mm. I mean, Ethos is a very good climbing bike, but 
with exposed cable and anything, you're paying very premium for that. Mm. Mm, don't sit well with me. Yeah. Two or three more questions. Yes. Uh, I'm just going to assume this is your friend because it's a very roasting question. Owned by someone who doesn't know how to ride a bike, not impressed. Oh, uh, <laughs> I don't know but uh, that person. But uh, if I don't know how to ride a bike, uh, <laughs> teach me law. <laughs> If you're too fast, then I cannot do anything law. But uh, at the end of the day, you write because you like it, you enjoy who dictates how you should write. Unless I'm riding very dangerously, killing people, causing traffic. Yeah. Uh, but if not, then yeah, it's your choice how you want to write. La. What do you love most about RCC? Oh, RCC. Uh. Uh, and how did you get into RCC? Uh, actually, I found out about it uh, through a lot of my cycling friends uh, back in Korea as well. Um, it's, it's one of the only clothing cycling clothing brands or cycling community. Uh, I mean, there are a lot of people that try to copy PNS or Pass Normal and many others um, together with this, but they are not close enough um, in terms of community. And Rafa is very engaging. I, I love... It, uh, I highly encourage you to try it, you know, join some social rights before you commit to it and see if you like it. Uh, I made very good, a lot of good friends from there. I have a very nice, uh, you know, Korean say, Hyung, brother and Nuna, older sister, right, in Korea that mm. takes me and me well. Uh, my cycling coach is in Korea, Audrey. Uh, she trained me well, fixed a lot of cycling issues that I had, uh, incorrect technique, how you cycle and things like that. Uh, you make a lot of good friends, mm. especially if you are introvert or if you come to a new country, you got no friends. Rafa it is. Mm. You make friends. It's the easiest uh, without needing to find a conversation. Hi, nice weather, right? <laughs> and of course, this comes with a price. Oh, uh, yes. I think it's about 100 over dollars for one year, but you get so many benefits to it. Uh, discounts at coffee stops. Uh, you get yellow jersey insurance yeah. uh, with it. Uh, you crash, you fall. There are certain limit, but you can claim insurance on your bike or certain parts damage, body injury and things like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, but pretty much that's it. Okay. Uh, you want to ask him anything about RCC? You wanted to join RCC and I was laughing to you about it. Because he wanted to join just for the coffee. Uh, you, just for no, a discount of coffee. No, you can join. Trust me, within a few times, you would have made your money back. I guarantee you that. You, want, you can go one step further, um, buying uh, some coffee place, uh, their collaboration with Rafa. Chai Sing Huat. Yeah, Chai Sing Huat, right? And then the best part is coffee is free, but you need to buy a uh, uh, bakery from them. So the last time we wrote, uh, I bumped into this team, uh, this um, Mario, Kart. Mar Mario team, Mario Kart. So this one of these uh, guys, yeah. his name is uh, on each IG is Let's Ride OK. Don't know if you've seen him before. Uh, he writes the Dogma F. I just filmed him recently. Probably by seeing him. Yeah. yeah, probably. So I met him there. That's how I managed to find an interview with him. And he was ordering his coffee and he said, hey, uh, I'm a Rafa member. Are yeah, you, you get the 10% discount. But a because I'm not a Rafa member, I'm like, hey, I'm, I'm with them, but can you give me the 10% discount? Yeah, I mean, generally, they don't, they don't check, but some do check. You yeah. can show me your Rafa ID, but yeah. I just say, your Rafa, you, some place is 10, 15, 20%, that okay. kind of thing. Okay. There's a lot of benefits to it long term. I mean, if you go for a lot of all this, especially if you write a lot, then yeah. But I mean, only if you, okay, uh, only if you write a lot outside of Singapore? No, um, the best part about it is the, the membership ex uh, not only covers Singapore, but globally. Mm. So let's just say I go to Korea, I don't know where to write, right? Um, or for example, you go down to the US, where to write, how to write, who to cycle with, see the nearest clubhouse, or if there's any ride, join them. Hi, I'm so-and-so mm. from Singapore. Nice to meet you, can I join? Yeah, great. They mm. take care of you. Mm. Okay. Simple as that. Uh, you, anything to ask on Rafa no more? Are you going to sign up? Uh, don't worry. Let's let's sign up right now. Let's go to Rafa.com. He, he gets a commission out of it. Yeah, I, I, I got a cut from it. I got to, I got to, I got to tell the, the Rafa Clubhouse manager I'm doing sales here, man. Okay, last question. Uh. Yes. Already one hour. Um, get rid of that abomination under the saddle. It will be lighter than 7.5 kilos. I would, but light, bro. And safety, lah. Do you really use it? Has, yeah, it, yeah, has yeah. it ever come in handy for you? Like you had to use the recordings? Uh, no, I always turn it on when I ride. Um, as you see, you know, I think the most recent um, Antares cycling or something like that, you know, someone hit from behind, hit and run. Uh, Anza, right? Anza. Yeah, so uh, hit and run, you know. Even if touch wood, I go upstairs, uh, someone can bring somebody to justice. La. It's, it's mm. like for that one moment you need it, that's it. It pays for itself already. Whether for yourself or somebody. Mm. And it doubles as a light.
Mm. Uh, so you try to make it as nice as possible. The only reason I put a lanyard here is because this mount is 3D printed. In any case, if it breaks or I, it's it dirty off. enough, it's not going to break. But if it breaks or drops, it holds the light. Okay. Right. And you don't want to lose something like $600 eh, on the road. Yeah. Anybody sees, oh, thank you very much. Yeah. <laughs> I picked up an exposure light before I got a spare exposure light. I picked up uh, on... Um, where? I picked it up on Telok Blanga Hill, right? I don't know who dropped it, but thank you very much. For your spare light. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so you never know, you know, things like that. My exposure light dropped off once before at TMC. I hit a big hole. Yeah, then so... Boom, I think it's strong on the ground. Uh, like, shit. Did you have that uh, rubber O-ring at the yeah, bottom? Yeah, because I didn't buy the original exposure. I bought from AliExpress. Oh, uh, no. I mean, sometimes uh, I used to go like AliExpress, but if I can, I try to... If you're already spending so much, put a little bit of care. I mean... To it lah. Okay, the only AliExpress things I have is are the usually bottle cage, right? uh, bottle cage. Uh, big fan of those cheapo five bucks bottle cages, carbon bottle cages, and the accessories and my cheapo socks. Yeah, I mean some of them is fine, but you know, um, I try not pay full price. So whenever there's sale, you buy it cheap. Like before this, I think um, for example, like this shirt, right? Um, it's like 60, 70 USD mm. uh, retail price, right? But uh, when sale comes, it's like twenty dollars. Oh, yeah. buy. Right, so you wait for those moments. You don't need it now. Now it's more of a want. Yeah. Right. Uh, Tony, that is all I have. Uh, anything you would like to address the audience who are watching? Buy envy. Lesser headache. <laughs> you get a cut of from envy. <laughs> uh, no, I don't get a cut. It's just that lesser headache. You can ride more. You don't care. You just whack only. You buy any bike. Wow, oh, pothole bunny hop lah. They do all kind of thing. <laughs> this one I just go through only. Okay lah. If you very big hole, siam lah. But yeah. if not, just whack lah. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. No so much problem. for coming. Uh, I want to do the recumbent. You've got the Pasoni. Uh, we will catch up separately. Uh, yeah. You know, on the upcoming ones. In Diamante, a lot of bikes coming. I think in Diamante, there's quite a few already. So I only need one, VJ only. Yeah, but uh, we don't have to do the same one. Because it's, okay. it's, pretty, it's pretty much the same. <laughs> okay, yeah, okay, we, we do we all can, the more interesting Yeah, ones. do the varieties. I think yeah. those will be interesting. Alright. Uh, thank you so much, Tony. For We'll see you again. Yep. Thanks thank you. a lot. Take care. Bye. Can't seem to focus this double side This is a tale Sworn in a sight